how to solve any CTF. Definitely a video that I wish I had when I was first learning this stuff. I think even now uh, it's important to remind myself of this. And uh, every time I do follow through on these steps, it always pans out. It always comes through. What's up, guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Quick announcement before I get into this. Uh, I'm actually going to be taking a few days off for my birthday for the next few days. So this will be my last video until Saturday. Uh, currently, time of recording, uh, it is Tuesday, October 5th. So I'll see you guys again on Saturday for more regular scheduled content. I mean, I've been doing a video a day for so long now. I'm going to take um, some much needed time off uh, and celebrate my birthday and things like that. So let's get right into it, right? So this is how you can solve any CTF. And I think one of the things that uh, you really need to keep in mind with this field, with this area, right? It comes as no surprise. It's considered a challenging field, right? It's considered difficult to do what we do. But uh, there's a lot of fields that are difficult, right? You know, you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a programmer, uh, you could be an engineer. But you got to kind of consider for a second that, um, you know, there's documentation and stuff, most certainly. But what they're trying to do, while difficult, it's at least supposed to be possible to do it, right? It's supposed to be um, something that you're able to do. Now, with the CTF, obviously, it's going to be vulnerable somewhere, so you could argue the same case. But with pen testing in general, that's not always the case, right? You might be going after a box that is hardened, you know, that you can't really exploit through any vulnerability or anything like that. You have to turn to social engineering maybe in that case, but that's besides the point. What we're trying to do, you have to step back and realize, what we're trying to do is in many cases, not even um, something that you're supposed to be able to do. Like in many senses, we're literally trying to break the software or in some cases the hardware and make it operate in a way that it was not intended to even operate, right? So sometimes it can be difficult to A, find documentation on this. Now you can find write-ups, you can find POCs in some cases, but that's not always the case, right? Sometimes all you'll have to go off of is a change log with a vague description of what the vulnerability was with no public exploit code available. And then you're kind of on your own, right? Uh, to use that limited information to reproduce the vulnerability. And so a lot of times you're going to have instability issues as well, right? You're going to have things that aren't, you know, exactly stable, not exactly working as smoothly as you would like. And, you know, it wasn't intended to behave in that way in the first place. So we're literally trying to make things operate in ways they're not even supposed to. So, of course, based off of that alone, of course, it's going to be difficult. Um, but how do you actually, in the case of a CTF where, you know, it clearly is possible, how do you actually pass that? How do you actually figure it out and, uh, you know, get the flags, right? So, honestly... You need to get good at, um, you need to get good, right? You need to get good at finding the information you need to find, for one thing. And I think Hack the Box Academy does a good job of teaching this. Uh, I don't actually, I never really used Academy, but I did read their Learning How to Learn article, and it was pretty good. And I think it's very true that you need to get good at um, finding the information, like using Google, searching for things. But you also need to be good at, adapting that to your situation, especially. I think OSCP does a great job of teaching this. You know, after you find an article that has the solution, you you know, it might not work copy and paste, right? You're going to need to modify certain parts of it in order to adapt it to your specific uh, case, right? And that is a skill in itself, you know, I think you would find that a lot of the modification stuff isn't too difficult. And I've made videos about that on this channel before, you know, in most cases, maybe some edge cases on OSCP will require a lot of modification, but even even then, usually not too, too bad. Maybe you have to generate some shell code unique to you or something like that. But in a lot of cases, you know, you're just going to be modifying certain parameters that um, will make sense, like the URL to your URL. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to really give concrete things without having an example in front of me. But, you know, you get the point there. But, uh, you know, also, 
there's a lot of learning that happens that you accumulate over time by putting in the practice, right? By getting yourself in these situations, in these scenarios. One of the mistakes that I made when I first started, and uh, this could be a whole video in itself, but one of the mistakes was when I did these CTFs, I was too quick to look up solutions. You want to you wanna put yourself in the fire a little bit because that's, that's an art in and of itself is to be comfortable with that pressure of not knowing what's going on and you know to be confused and having to enumerate more and struggle through it. Once again, OSCP, I think, does a great job of, of teaching you that. And the more exposure you get to it, the more calm you are in that situation, clear-headed, and you are able to get through. But one thing they say, right? One thing that they say in cybersecurity is that a hacker with infinite time could break into any system. And uh, that is mostly true. Um, so especially if there's a vulnerability, right? If there's no vulnerabilities at all, then, you know, maybe not. But, um, hey, an in infinite time, maybe a new uh, POC comes out uh, to exploit that, a new vulnerability is found on that technology. Then he'll probably get in. So I guess with infinite time, he could get in. But, you know, with, certainly with CTFs where they're intentionally vulnerable, made to be usually solved within a reasonable time frame, with infinite time, you could solve any CTF. Now, of course, I'm not saying spend infinite time on this stuff, but, you know, don't just look up the solutions right away. Really push yourself to figure it out on your own. And the more you do this, the better you're going to get at this because your methodology, if you just look up the solution, the problem with just looking up the solution is you don't actually train your methodology. Your methodology is something that you develop by being in these situations repeatedly, kind of struggling through it a little bit and working your way out of that um, tricky situation, figuring out the answer, right? So that's going to, you're end up get, you're going to end up learning way more, right? Because you're going to look things up that, you know, will lead you maybe down a rabbit hole or the wrong path, but you'll end up learning way more about that piece of technology and that angle of things. So that will help you accumulate knowledge over time as well. And uh, yeah, you just need to persist. That's a huge part of this, even on the job, in the, in the actual job, not just on CTFs. You know, you might not, there might not even be an exploit. Maybe there is an exploit. Maybe it's vulnerable. Maybe it's not vulnerable, right? But you need to have that mindset of you're just going to keep digging at it, you know, chipping away at it and enumerating and enumerating until, you know, you're probably going to find a lot of things that you definitely wouldn't have otherwise found or would even think was possible to find if you really persist. You got to be persistent and you, you have to have some grit to you. You have to just be willing to write it out and uh, figure it out or not, right? And just put in that due diligence. If you are super reliant on looking up solutions, then when you're actually on the job in the field, you're not going to have that level of persistence that you need to actually you know, have the big findings. So I think that's something to keep in mind because we're not just trying to do CTFs, at least in my case, I don't want to just be able to do CTFs for the sake of doing CTFs. I want, it, I want to be able to level up as a pen tester as well with the actual real world stuff. And uh, certainly if you want to find some CVEs out there or bug bounty, uh, get bug bounty payments, you're going to need to be persistent even if uh, whether or not you can exploit something is um, even possible, right? You're going to have to be persistent most definitely to find those things that uh, you don't even know if there's a solution or not, right? How would you find it otherwise? So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If so, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button as well to help out in the algorithms. And I'll see you guys on Saturday.